It's Monday morning, and in a boardroom nestled within an office complex in the heart of Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, a team of young Nigerians are getting set for the day's business. This is Nigeria's Enabling Business Environment Secretariat, and these young men and women are part of an elite team tasked with the responsibility of coming up with ideas and solutions towards removing critical bottlenecks to doing business in Nigeria. Their work focuses on implementation of reforms aimed at making Nigeria a progressively easier place to do business. Try to have a detailed plan to make sure that we're able to essentially speak to our demographic, our MSN... Dr. Jumoke Oduwale heads the Secretariat, and together with her team of staff and volunteers, they assist ministries, departments and agencies, MDAs, to implement the reform agenda of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC. The team supports MDAs in the crafting of documents that could end up as bills and laws, develop the ideas and solutions that will address lingering issues that affect businesses, and as often as the need arises, interface directly with local business owners to listen and respond to their pain points. What name did you use in lodging the complaint on the portal? Akimbo, right. Young Solomon Okut has been with the Secretariat for about a year, 15 months including NYSE. And one of his key responsibilities is responding to the complaints of business owners across the country using the aid of a revolutionary app that was designed to help ordinary citizens interact directly with government agencies whenever they had complaints about services. When someone leaves a complaint, so you go to the reportgov.ng website and then this pops up. It will show you a box where you can select the um, MDA where you want to leave the complaint to and then you explain your complaint. Report.gov.ng was one of the first innovations that was introduced by the Secretariat to Nigeria's business climate, and its creation can be traced to a chance encounter that a young tech developer had in 2016. The Vice President was at a program, the platform. 39 minutes into his speech, he said... So we want to develop an app, and we're asking, you know, uh, computer programmers and other technology developers to participate in that hackathon so that we can get the best app uh, that can enable the public to complain effectively about uh, government agencies that are supposed to encourage business and make it easier to do business, but which are not doing so. So the moment I heard that, I knew I had to participate in this hackathon. And I thought that solution could bridge the gap, could make it possible for citizens to directly provide feedback um, to those who are governing them. Ayokunu's team won the hackathon and on the 25th of June 2018, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, formally launched Pebec Report, which was later rebranded to report.gov.ng in March 2019. So far, report.gov.ng has been a hit with business owners and the Secretariat has been able to work with various ministries, departments and agencies to resolve thousands of cases over a four-year period. People often think, uh, man no man, I mean, that's the only way you can get things resolved, but, but it's, it's gratifying that strangers can just use the platform and get response at the other end of it. When we are trying to do um, registration with Corporate Service Commission, a colleague of mine introduced me to um, Pebec. I told her that, are you sure the things were said? Ah. I to work I sent my complaint to Pebec. And that very day, they sent me a ticket number. And from there, I started following up on my complaints. If you lodge a complaint today, you should be expecting your report maybe tomorrow or next tomorrow. The response is 100%. After the inauguration of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council in 2016, the Enabling Business Environment Secretariat was set up to handle the day-to-day -day affairs of managing, on behalf of the Council, the reform implementation process towards making Nigeria a progressively easier place to do business. From an initial team of four, the Secretariat has grown to over 30 Nigerians, each carefully selected based on skill, character and passion. So the building of the team has been one of the most interesting experiences that I've had 
in my lifetime. It's been, what I call it, organic. We had a senior level uh, consultant from KPMG. We had a huge amount of support from Deloitte. We had a partner level resource from Banwa Nigodalo. So the first administration saw a lot of support from the private sector and we really fixed the engine running. That was the organic process. By the time we had our own budget to get consultants, we knew the skill sets we needed and we knew the types of personalities that we needed. One of the first team members that was recruited into the Secretariat from the private sector was David Uzusike, at the time a consultant with KPMG Professional Services. Just like many other members of the EBIS team, David signed up out of the desire to see change in Nigeria. And in his case, the desire was born out of personal experience. Having worked in consulting most of my life, um, the experience was not really that good in terms of getting service from the public sector. There were no clear timelines as to how, how long it's going to take for you to get certain approvals or permits. Um, it was just opaque. And given the mandate of the public to remove uh, bureaucratic bottlenecks in the uh, public service, I thought that would be a good opportunity to try and make some changes. When David officially joined in 2017, the Pebec had just been given a clear mandate by the president. Do everything possible to make Nigeria a progressively easier place to do business, and one of the ways to achieving this was to move Nigeria upwards in the World Bank Doing Business Rankings. In order to achieve this, the council immediately focused on certain key indices on the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index, via which nations were ranked. These indices included ease of starting a business, dealing with construction permits, getting electricity, registering property, getting credit, paying taxes, and trading across borders. To go even further, the team also developed its own homegrown indicators which were not part of the World Bank Index. And one such key homegrown indicator was the entry and exit of people. It was here that David would put to great use his personal experiences and knowledge of the issues associated with traveling into and out of Nigeria. So I've had that experience of traveling and know what it takes to, or what the experience is when you're getting to a new country at the airport. You don't see multiple uniformed officers um, you know, coming to you. By the time you come into the country, you see that it's, it's totally, it's a contrast from what you've seen going out. So all that experience also factored into um, the articulation of what I felt would be a good um, reform to implement in that area. The document that David and the team crafted around the entry and exit of people indicator led to one of the most important reforms that the team has achieved to date. Visa on arrival for business people coming into Nigeria. This singular reform has had one of the most significant impacts on business owners across the country, especially those who interface with foreign partners and investors. Nigeria's you know, journey in this has been you know, quite phenomenal. They've looked at the issues and they said, look, um, you know, airports are very important to us. Entry and exit of people is something that we want to tackle. When an investor comes, first thing they get to the country is the airport. You know, let's take a look at our airports. And I really, really think it was such a great idea. For us, before we bring a client, <laughs> it was really, really difficult before you can even bring an expert. Right now, we're able to get visas within a day or two, and then clients are able to come in to supervise the employees that are working on them. That has really helped. Motivated by the success of their work, the team doubled their efforts and slowly other reforms started to show. So we started very simply with, um, at the very beginning, with three indicators entry and exit of people, entry and exit of goods, and transparency. And then when we adopted the World Bank cycle, which had about 10 reforms, I think the first year we worked on about four or five. Prior to what has just happened, we had like four or five different forms we have to fill. Now we have one single form, which has incorporated all those features or requests on that one form 
and of course it has also brought down the cost of doing business. Then we also deploy the company's registration portal, which you know uh, enables customers to now do the registration online from the comfort of their office or their home. I remember when I registered my first company in 2004, I had to drop my documents, I had to come back to see where they've approved it. But now with CS now, you just go online, you do a name search, you see where your name is approved, and then you now pay. Everything is quite done online. Before the reform started, on average, if you are applying for either governor's consent or certificate of occupancy, it takes an average of about 77 days. We've managed to reduce that to about 40, 45 days, and we're working aggressively to try and reduce that further to our target, which is 30 days. We have a situation where every permit, every approval that is required in terms of regulation, there's a stipulated time frame with which our agency needs to respond. And to the extent that we don't respond within that timeline, um, the applicant will deem his application approved. Optimizing the systems to the point where a lot of things are digital is very helpful because before you just tell an agent, you have to call these agents and tell them, oh, I want to clear my goods. And they have to go through whatever they do behind the scene, you don't know, but you end up paying exorbitant amounts of money to get your products out. Optimizing the formen process is good. I have a team who does that. Um, go online, do my formem, get it to approval stage, and that's it, I'm good. The National Assembly made a commitment from inception that we will improve the business environment in Nigeria. And then the issue of credit came because it was first a requirement. People have to get credit to be able to establish small businesses and the rest. And then we said, okay, fine. We will do the credit, credit uh, reporting bill. And then we will do the movable assets uh, bill. And then we were convinced that what we have passed is a very clean sheet of legislation. You cannot use your collateral like your jewelry or your car or things. For a small business, those are probably your most important assets to get credit as collateral as opposed to you must have an immovable property. In small businesses, most often they're starting with a sole proprietor or you know um, co-founders trying to get started. That access to credit will allow for them to grow their businesses, employ more people, thus being able to uh, have those people generate an income. In terms of the difficulty of the payment of tax for the small-scale businesses, we granted uh, amnesty a waiver of all outstanding interest and penalties up until 2016. So even if you had a small-scale business and tax was a concern and you didn't want to get into the tax net because of past taxes, we waived all the outstanding taxes. Change was indeed possible and these young Nigerians were the change agents. It's been the best job of my life. It's made me believe in the, in the need for more Nigerians to roll up their sleeves and dive into real work to build the nation. What really excites me most is sometimes um, and looking at the over 160 reforms that have been achieved and what impact each of them have had and even how they've trickled down into the overall GDP and how they add to that. It's, it's something to be really proud of and I'm, I'm, I'm super, super proud of what we've been able to achieve. But change will always meet with resistance and so it was important to make sure that the reforms were not short-lived. In a bid to entrench these reforms, the administration issued its first executive order designed as a rulebook for the promotion of transparency and efficiency in the public sector. So the executive order was truly ahead of its time. Uh, not just reform, it was innovative because it spoke to how ministries, departments and agencies would interact with private sector. So things like how do you communicate approvals? Introducing um, things like putting information on your website, making sure that your website is up to date, and if it's not up to date, who is responsible? Five months after the launch of Executive Order 001, the World Bank released the nation's rankings on the Global Doing Business Index. Nigeria had moved an unprecedented 24 steps up on the rankings and was also listed on the highly coveted top 10 global reformer list. 
I called the Vice President. I said, Your Excellency, we moved up 24 places. And he was like, so it's possible. It is possible. Indeed, no one saw it coming, but the achievement brought global recognition and gave the team the credibility they needed to continue their work in building trust with the private sector. But how do you engage with thousands of business owners spread across the 36 states of the Federation? Well, you take a tour of Nigeria and you give it a cool name, a lituation. Welcome to the Business Made Easy Lituation, kicking off of the sub-national tour. We're going to be listening, talking about things that we need to implement and track as we go along. So Lituation was going to one state, representing the region, and inviting MSMEs, young MSMEs, from across the region. The MSMEs came in and saw a listening team, and were very, very frank. They spoke to power very, very candidly. I hear the likes of CAC, Servicom, NAVDAQ complain about what they are doing to add lives. I reach these people directly. We don't know these things. We don't follow government because we believe that they are far from us. And without exception, every governor that hosted a literation put aside their prepared remarks and spoke from the heart. We will take all the narrative coming from the reviews that's coming from all the things we do today, and we use it as a yardstick for us to do better. To successfully grow our economy and to successfully industrialize our state, we have to critically look at our ease of doing business. We're ready to implement wholesale reforms required for our respective states to improve our individual and collective business environment. The number one ingredient for making or creating an endeavoring environment, a very conducive environment for business, is leadership. It's very, very important uh, for the citizens also to do their own part. In an era when governments alone cannot provide all the jobs for its citizens, the least it can do is to provide the necessary enabling environments for our youths to create their own businesses and thrive. In the last three years, Lituation has visited six states and the Federal Capital Territory and engaged with over 3,000 MSMEs and other stakeholders in a bid to deepen the impact of business reforms. Government is desirous and is working hard to try to see to it that Nigeria becomes the number one uh, industrial destination for foreign uh, direct investment. But reforms without political will cannot achieve much. So while the Lituation train travels from state to state, other members of the EBIS team stay back at the Secretariat to continue to do some very important work. Toyin Bashir is a veteran lawyer who practices in one of the nation's top tier law firms. In 2016, just after the Secretariat commenced operations, she was seconded to the Secretariat's and today heads the Secretariat's legal cluster and their job focuses on implementation of legal reforms, including working with the National Assembly to draft legislative reforms that will have positive impact on doing business in Nigeria. A lot of the reforms have legislations because uh, they have legal structures underpinning them, right? And so if you actually want to make institutionalized reforms, let me put it that way, you must also go to the enabling legislation. That is, how were they set up? What are the reasons? So an easy example, in 2016, it, there was a report that only 3% of SMEs, operational SMEs, were able to access finance. So in order to then project that reform, you have to review the law and then amend it to suit the issue. So if you don't have a if you don't have somebody looking on the legal side, you're not able to appreciate those sort of issues. At the core of the work that Toyin and her team do is ensuring that the reforms implemented do not unravel. And to achieve this, their strategy is to collaborate with stakeholders 
particularly the legislative arm of government, to institutionalize the reforms. One of the important assignments that they took on was a review of the Company and Allied Matters Act 1990, a 30-year-old law that was outdated and had become a constraint on innovative practices. The Companies and Allied Violence Act 1990 was the business, was you know, like the foremost business legislation which governs you know, company-related matters in Nigeria. It wasn't a law that was friendly to MSMEs. The provisions were not in, you know, in tandem with the realities of the time. So one of the um, mandates of the committee at the time was to review it to establish a legal structure that was specially for MSMEs. Working with a wide range of stakeholders in the public and private sector, Toyin and her team went to work introducing over 200 amendments to Nigeria's foremost piece of business legislation. It took four years to review and pass into law, but Kama remains one of the most impactful achievements of the PEBEC. Those provisions which allow MSMEs to not have those onerous responsibilities were taken out. So now we have situations where, as an SME, you don't need to convene a general meeting. Also audit, you know, getting an auditor, auditing on, an, on a yearly basis. Again, MSMEs don't have to do that. Over 200 amendments uh, were incorporated in that law, so you can imagine, yes, so how beneficial that has been. Not resting on their laurels, the Pebec Secretariat collaborated with over 40 law firms under the section of business law of the Nigeria Bar Association and other stakeholders from the private sector and the Federal Ministry of Justice to draft another document which seeks to amend different outdated business-related laws using one single legislation tagged an omnibus bill. Omnibus is the fact that it's um amending different laws using one single legislation. Um, it's the first of its kind, and when it is actually passed, ministries, departments, and agencies would then be mandated to make all the information which relates to any activities that involve businesses, MSMEs, and also even big corporates are published on their websites. When information is available, to businesses and to investors all around the world, they can plan in terms of what it would take to actually start up a particular business or even you know, um, join in terms of partnership on existing businesses. Thanks to support from the National Assembly, the bill has been passed by the House of Representatives and passed second reading at the Senate and is well on its way to becoming law. MSMEs are the engine of any economy and PEBEX interventions are mainly targeted at helping small and medium business owners overcome the challenges that come with doing business in Nigeria. From starting and running a business to sustaining it and even resolving commercial disputes. In a small court in the business city of Kano, a judge presides over a dispute between two business owners. <laughs> This court is one of several courts across the country known as Small Claims Court. Another innovative solution emanating from the ongoing partnership between the PEBEG and state governments. Nigerians know that going to court, it takes time. It's a pretty slow process. So for the first time, we thought around setting up a different court which didn't exist in Nigeria. So for the first time, you would have a dispute, you would take it to court, and you were guaranteed that it would be taken up and reviewed within 60 days. This had not been done before. The first small claims court was established in Lagos in 2018. Today, we have seven states that have established small claims courts across the country. What we have done in Lagos states is to designate 15 courts now over the seven magisterial districts that we have in Lagos State. And it's the first of its kind in this country. This will encourage more business activities in the society. 
In the event the defendant fails or neglects to file his defense answer or admission to the claim, such a failure will be treated as an admission of the claim as provided by Article 6, Rule 3 of the Practice Direction. Therefore, judgment is entered in favor of the plaintiff against the defendant in the sum of 940,000 Naira as judgment sum and 5,000 Naira as court fees. Court Tamil Idols. Court Tamil Idols in the Court Tamil. So, I'm going to in the Udu, the Uku, the Shigat, the one Nakara. Gashio Kota, so I'm going to look at Sina, Doka, Abunzi, the Loka, Tishi, Kara, any Kobi, Anata, one Nesharat. From tech developers to business consultants, lawyers, teachers, and public servants, the team at Nigeria's Enabling Business Environment Secretariat are a mixed bunch of young and energetic Nigerians who work hard and love to bond. It is often said that the team is as strong as its weakest link. So it's important for us um, to learn more about ourselves, first as individuals in a team, and together as a team, we also need to understand what works for us. Most importantly, we learn about each other and how to make our team a lot more effective. If we don't learn about each other or know how to make sure we are delivering the best results, we will not be the best. Five years after launching out into Nigeria's business space, Pebec Secretariat is proud to be associated with the achievements of the Pebec. But they are not just motivated by the successes of the present, they have a vision of the future. Global analysts have watched in amazement as Nigeria has come a long way over the last 10 years, becoming a textbook example of how an economy can turn itself around. What they have done is nothing short of a miracle. How did they succeed where others had failed? So I wrote this when I was invited to speak on October 1, 2021, to say, what do you see for Nigeria? And so I looked out ahead about a decade, 10, 12 years to 2032. Nigerian entrepreneurs have everything it takes and once they're enabled, once they have access to credit, once they have the infrastructure, when we enable them to produce, start exporting with AFCFTA, exporting across the continent, exporting globally, I see it. And it's not a figment of my imagination. This is based on data. And this is what is achievable. The future of our country lies in our hands. What makes nations great? Those who make nations great are you and I, men, not spirits. We have the capacity and our vision is very clear. I want to urge us to go forward to prove that an African nation, a nation such as ourselves, can be, can be better, not just bigger, but better than any nation, greater than any nation anywhere in the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>